Praise the King of Kings Hallelujah. and God of Lords. We are from the Rock Intercessor Ministries. Yes. We are today to preach to you the word of Jesus Christ. Yes. Hoping that some of you give your life to God today. Amen. Amen. Now today's message is, I have my mind made up. Amen. My dear friend, I have my mind made up that I'm going to do what? Serve Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the King of Kings. Amen. So today, I'm coming to you not as persistent. I'm coming to you not with bitterness. I'm coming to you today with the word of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today I'm going to share the word of God. And I'm going to let you know today, my dear friends, the promises that it belongs to the saint of God. And if you give your life to, get to Jesus Christ, you will partake in that promises, my dear friend. So today we ought to do what to refocus. To realize that we are the children of God. Amen. We are not from this world. Hallelujah. We are from another world. Our kingdom does not belong to here, my dear friend. Our kingdom belongs to the kingdom of God. While we are living in the United Kingdom, my dear friend. So today I want to talk to you today. I got my mind made up. Hallelujah. I got my mind made up to serve God. What about you today, my dear friends? I want you to listen to what Apostle Paul says in the book of Philippians chapter 3 verse 18. Paul says, For so many of whom I have often told you, and now even with tears. So yes, Apostle Paul, and they have broken. And then he said, they walk as the enemies of the cross. And their end is destruction and their belly. Watch this, their God is their belly. And their glory is in their shame. With their minds set on earthly things. But Apostle Paul said, we are the citizens of heaven. Amen. From you who await our Lord Jesus Christ. We will transform our lonely body and to become his glorious body. And the power that enables in him even to subject all things to himself. So yes, Apostle Paul, he wrote this letter from prison in Rome. Even surrounding him was all the Rome with their politics, the city of war, gross immorality. Rome was a city of war, great hostility to Christians, to the gospel news of our Lord Jesus Christ, just like the city of London these days. And the same way Rome also filled with what? Paganism. Just like the city of London today, my dear friend. And we know which was ruling Rome that time was Nero. It was ruling Rome. Rome is an epidemic of evil. Christians have no joy in Rome when, when Nero was ruling. And we know today, Christians are not even having joy today in the United Kingdom. And that amazes me because the Bible... We thought to say that this is a Christian country, my, by the way, my dear friend. And you can see during the time of post time, you can find that the Christians have no joy. They have no any person representing, representing them in the government. They were not in the government. They were not even allowed to be to be the citizen of Rome. No wonder, no wonder Apostle Paul says, Look, our citizenship is in heaven, my dear friend. You see, and then Apostle Paul go on to point out the two contrasts between those who are once born, living in this world, and those who are twice born, living in this world. So today, first of all, I want you to notice the contrast of what Apostle Paul was saying. He said, for many of whom I have told you before, I often told you, and now he said, even with tears, they work as the enemy of cross of Christ Jesus Christ. So many Christians... Right now, we are living in this world. We have an unseen enemy. And that unseen enemy is a special world being ruled by the devil himself. But there's another world here today that we face here today. Even in the United Kingdom, we have the enemies of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Absolute world enemy to the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And they don't even think themselves as an enemy. But Jesus Christ said this, Whosoever is not with me is against me. And who does not gather with me, scatter abroad. So the preaching you are hearing right now is the gospel news of our Lord Jesus Christ. And most people today do not value, do you know why? The Bible says the message is foolish to them. That's what the Bible says. The preaching of the cross is to them. It's perishness of what? Foolishness to them. Why? Because they do not believe. They can't teach an old dog no tricks. So you see here today, my dear friend, this message is about Jesus Christ. And apart from the divine nature of revelation of God, he can never understand this message. 
Does no one of the Bible say the small G girl of this world are blinded the minds and the heart of unbelievers not to accept the word of Jesus Christ? So today I want you to see the contrast what Apostle Paul was talking. First of all, there's enemies, their appetite. Because in verse 19 it says, their end is destruction and their belly, their God is their belly. So what does it mean here, this my dear friend? These people that have sexual, their drug abuse, their alcoholism, their sexuality, their glory is in these things. So there's no wonder he says their God is in their belly. And their glory is in their shame. We have a world here today who glorify in their flesh. They ought to do what to hand their hand in shame. But no, this generation today will see here today. They don't brush. You are not ashamed of your sin. You are not ashamed of your sin. And that amazes me. No wonder the Bible says your glory is in your shame. You drink, you smoke, you have sleepover, you do all this crazy thing, and still you're not ashamed of it. And then you have a pride. And then you celebrate pride. So that's why today the word of God is talking to you today. Because these people, they are proud of their perversion. Apostle Paul said that glory is in their shame. So you see the hospitality, you see the appetite, you see the affection. I want you also to notice what the Bible says here. With their mindset on earthly things. Their mind said what? On earthly things. Do you know that you can set your mind? As you wake up this morning, you can set your mind to praise God. You can set your mind to get drunk. You can set your mind to worship God. You can set your mind to have sleepover. You can set your mind to do crazy things. Your mind is the place the devil is talking to you today. Am I myself for you today? I got my mind made up. I got my mind made up, my dear friends. I give my, I give my body, my soul, my mind, my spirit to Jesus Christ. Am I message for you today? Stratford, London, United Kingdom. Call your mind made up and give your mind to Jesus Christ. You see, because the Bible said they set their mind on the earthly things. They only think about the things that is now. They don't think after life. So they're only concerned about the nasty, nasty now. But Apostle Paul is going to give us another contrast. Because he was writing for the prison. He talked about their hostility. He talked about their appetites. He talked about their affections. He also talked about their legions. No wonder he says in the book of Philippians chapter, chapter 3 verse 20, Apostle Paul says, Our citizenship is in heaven. From it, we, from it we wait our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. So now, during the Paul's day, we know who is in charge that time, Caesar, isn't it? Everybody who says it doesn't say Caesar is Lord, will be killed. But the Christian refused to say Caesar is Lord. Do you know why? Because Caesar can never be Lord, my dear friend. Jesus Christ is Lord. And that's a bit different. Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's the everlasting King, my dear friend. Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. We didn't vote him in. We can never vote him out. Jesus Christ is not a politician. He's a God. So don't get it, don't get it twisted, my dear friends. My dear friend, don't get it twisted. Jesus is Lord. So no one of the Christians refused to bow to Caesar. The Bible says, give what belongs to Caesar to Caesar and give what belongs to God to belongs to God. He can never take what belongs to God and let it to Caesar. Let me ask you today as you are walking around right now in Stratford, making your way to work or going back or shopping. When that coin is being thrown around, will God see the face of Caesar or will God see the face of the image of God? That's my point, my dear friend. That's why today I'm telling you, I got my mind made up. I got my mind made up to serve Jesus Christ. I got my mind made up to serve the King of Kings. I got my mind up to serve the King of Glory. He's the everlasting Father, my dear friends. Amen? So today I want you to say, okay. we ought to do what to un lend everything that belongs to God to God. No one that Apostle Paul says about his aspiration in verse 21, Apostle Paul speaking about his aspiration for heaven. He says he's looking forward to that day. He's looking forward to see our Lord Jesus Christ. We will transform our lonely body to be like the glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject all things to him. Do you hear that, my dear friend? He enables him. Do you know that our God is able? Our God is absolutely whatever to do more than you can even imagine. Amen? There's no panic in heaven, my dear friend. There's no shaking in the kingdom of God. The Holy Trinity, they never sit down and say, let's have emergency session. To say, let's do this or look that. No, no, I guarantee you this. Everything has been settled. The life that you are living right now has been set from the beginning. You are just walking to the end of it, my dear friend. 
Jesus Christ know the end to the beginning and the beginning to the end, my dear friend. And we come here today to share the word of God into your heart, hoping that you got your mind made up Stratford, got your mind made up London, got your mind made up UK, so that you can serve a living God today, my dear friend. You see? So Apostle Paul says, speaking from prison in Rome, you have aspiration of heaven. And that's the contrast today I want you to see. Many people today, they're interested in this world, in the worldly affairs, but we, we are the children of God. We don't belong to this world. Amen? We are the pilgrims. We are not vagabonds. We are not strangers. A vagabond has no home. A stranger has, is away from home. But a pilgrim is heading to home. And we are the pilgrims. And our mandate today, just Christ has given us to do what? Is the great commission to do what? To preach the gospel news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And that's why we come here today. To do something else will be what? Counterproductive. We don't talk about politics. Well, nothing to do with politics, my dear friend. We come here today to offer to you the word of Jesus Christ. Hoping that some of you will give your heart to God today, man. Hallelujah. Have you given your life to Jesus, my dear friends? Do you know who Jesus Christ is? Are you willing today to offer your life to him? Give your heart to him today, my dear friend. Make up your mind and serve a living God. Because when all said and done, you have a date with God, my dear friend. Whether you choose to serve him today, or you refuse to serve him, you still have a date with him. Whether you love him or whether you hate him, you still have a date with Jesus Christ. Whether you stay here, whether you run away, you still have a date with Jesus Christ, my dear friend. And that's why we come here today to preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ in love. You see, when I give my life to God, I got my mind made up to preach the gospel news. 100%. Amen. I will preach against sin. I will preach against alcohol. Alcoholism, I will preach against homosexuality, I will preach against lesbian, I will preach against anything perversion, I will preach against wickedness, I will preach against racism, I will preach against immorality, I will preach against anything that is contrary to the word of God. And that's why today, Stratford, I'm telling you today, I got my mind made up, my dear friend. Hallelujah. So today, I want you to come back to Jesus Christ today. Brother, 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 brother. Brother, excuse me. Brother, excuse me, brother. Brother, I'm preaching. Just give me another 10 minutes. We can't have conflict, please. I'm preaching before you come here, so give me another 10 minutes, please. Amen? So today, my dear friend, I want you to give your heart to Jesus Christ. Amen? And the good news is very simple. Do you know what the good news is? Do you know what the gospel news of our Lord Jesus Christ is? That Jesus Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scripture that he was buried. He was risen on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, that is what the gospel is. Amen. Dead and buried and risen. He died for our sins. He was buried and he risen again on the third day in accordance with the scripture. That's what the Bible says. And that is what our mission is here is this to preach to you. Never forget this, my dear friend. We want you today to give your heart to Jesus Christ. Amen. The message is valid and clear. The Bible says this in the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. Apostle Paul said that he can do all things to Christ Jesus Christ who strengthens him. Hallelujah. So today, my dear friend, wherever you are today, I want to tell you today that the Bible says, For God so loved the world. Are you a Muslim? Jesus Christ died for you. Are you a Buddhist? Jesus Christ died for you. Are you a Hindu? Jesus Christ died for you. Are you an atheist? Don't deny that it's God. Jesus Christ did that for you. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. That whosoever, you know what that means? Whosoever, if you are willing today to give out to Jesus Christ, you, my dear friend, you will be saved. He said, You will not perish. Perish means going to hell. He said, You will not perish, but you do what? Have eternal life. And that's why Apostle Paul says that we ought to do what? To fix our eyes on the thing that is above. Amen. God bless you. Take a, fl take a flyer. God bless you, brother. God bless you, sir. Amen. So the word of Jesus Christ is valid and clear. I'm telling you today. My, my name is Brother Kingsley. I got my mind made up to serve a living God. Amen. He lives in me. I live in him. That's Jesus Christ. He lives in me. I live in him. Are you willing today to accept him as your Lord and personal Savior? Because Apostle Paul says in the first Corinthians chapter 4, verse 10, that the weapons of our warfare is not flesh, it's not kind of my dear friend. So here is this, we have a different warfare that's going on right now. There's a war against your flesh, 
There's a stronghold today holding you down not to accept Jesus Christ. And I want you to understand here is this. To the power of the Holy Spirit, you will be victorious. Amen. We have a source, which is the Almighty God. Our commander-in-chief, Jesus Christ. And our battle today is the sword. You know what that sword is? Not fiscal sword. Special sword, which is the word of God. Word of Jesus Christ, my dear friend. And that's why today we come here to do what to offer to you the word of salvation. If you receive Jesus Christ today as a Lord and personal Savior, the Bible says we we'll give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. I don't deserve it. You don't deserve it, but He will give it to you as a gift. It's a gift. If you are willing today to give your heart to Jesus Christ, my dear friend. So today I want you to say that we are fighting against the devil. We is the evil one. We is the wicked one. Who us to do, do lares, do protests, do marches, do slogans, do all these things. We Christians, we don't protest. Any Christian that you see that protesting, they are not Christian, my dear friend. We protest on our nails and we call upon our God. We don't go and march around, do the flag, shouting, screaming. We don't do this, my dear friend. Look into the life of the apostles in the past. You never see them go and do protests. Are you a Christian today? Stop protesting. The Bible says, go home, put your knees in down and pray. Raise your hands up and pray to Almighty God. Because why? This world, the small G God of this world, he says, the only way you can overcome the devil, my dear friend, is to report the Holy Spirit. And that's why we come here to, here to offer to you. My message for you today is very loud and clear. I got my mind made up, amen? We fight the devil through fasting and praying, amen? If you do it the other way around, if you are protesting, you are doing all this fight for your right, fight this right, I'm telling you today, he can never win that war. Look, everybody who has protested in the past, he never win anything. There's nothing he can win in protest, my dear friend. But when you put your knees on the ground, raise your hand up in the sky, and commit your ways into the hands of God. The Bible says what? All things work together for good for them that love God, and I call according to his purpose, my dear friend. And that's why we today we come here to share with you the word of Jesus Christ. Amen. So another thing I want you to see here is that the Bible said, Rejoice, always rejoice. In the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 4. It said, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say to you, rejoice. That's one of the reasons I got my mind made up. Your bitterness can never stop me from not serving God. The government can never stop me from serving God. Nobody can stop me from serving God because why I got my mind made up. Hallelujah. And that's why we come here to the share with you today. If you receive your Christ today as your Lord and personal Savior, you will got your mind made up as well, my dear friend. Apostle Paul going to say that the Lord is at hand. So that means Jesus Christ will never forsake you. Amen. The Bible says we should commit everything into prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. And the Bible says make your request made known to God. And the God of peace who surpasses every understanding will guide your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus Christ. Is that easy? Yes. Do you have a willing heart? Yes. Have you got your mind made up? The Bible says in everything two prayers and supplications and make your request made known to God. So forget about protesting. Amen. Put all your flag down, put all the protesting down, give your heart to Jesus Christ, my dear friend. Yes. We Christians, we don't protest. Amen? We give our heart to Jesus Christ. The Bible says two prayers, intercessions, make your request known to God. And the God, who knows, will give you the power of the Holy Spirit and he will give you victory, my dear friend. So as I'm bringing message to close, I want you today not to be despair. The Bible says, rejoice, always rejoice. If you look into the book of the New Testament, you can never find anywhere the Bible says, the people, anything negative word, anything negative note, everything is positive. Even though when they are down, they still know, they stay winning. We never lose, my dear friend. Son of God never lose. Christians never lose. Whether in life or in death, we are victorious. So today, my dear friend, come back today, give your heart to Jesus Christ, and remember, bless in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen and amen and amen.